Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue with the second part of the first tutorial um, to understand not just how feedforward networks uh, generate interesting dynamics and um, evolve their firing rates as a function of external input, but how um, recurrent networks, um, indeed, which most of the networks in the brain are, uh, also generate dynamics and interesting um, um, firing rate activities. Today, we're also going to introduce the concept of uh, fixed points uh, or steady states of these networks. So as you remember, in the first part of the tutorial, we first studied what a feedforward network is, and we um, conceptualized this framework by looking at a population of neurons that all have very similar properties that we could model with a single scalar variable R that denotes the firing rate of that population that is driven by an external input I external. So we wrote down a differential equation that was comprised of two different parts, namely a first part that told us, uh, which was a, a leak, that told us how the activity of this population will decay in time if the input um, is removed. Uh, in this case, for example, the activity could decay with a time constant determined by tau. And a second part of the equation that told us how this um, population of neurons integrates the external input I through a nonlinear FI curve um, denoted here with F. Uh, what we will discuss today is going beyond these feedforward networks and consider recurrently connected networks. So the, the change here is that the activity, the dynamics of this neural population is not just determined by the external input I external, but also by recurrent connectivity that exists among all the neurons in this population. Even though I haven't shown this, this explicitly assumes that all these neurons are uh, connected to each other, and this could actually be with very different profiles. They can all be connected all to all, or they can be connected with a given probability, like 10% probability and so on. And this, of course, depends on the properties of um, the neurons that you're trying to model. To represent this in our modeling framework, we're just going to assume that we have this connection W, um, that is the recurrent connection that effectively denotes how strongly the population is um, coupled to itself. And this particular parameter will depend on the strengths of the connection, as of the, uh, will also depend on the nature of the connectivity, namely are the neurons connected all to all or with a particular probability, um, and so on. But this now allows us to modify slightly the equation for the firing rate activity of this population R. So in addition to the external input, we also have a um, uh, another term that contributes to the total input current received by neurons in this postsynaptic population, namely the product of the connection strength and the firing rate activity R. So um, how can we understand the dynamics of these recurrent networks? Obviously, the dynamics of these uh, recurrent networks depends on the strength of this recurrent connectivity as well as the strength of the external input. We're going to use the mathematical framework of dynamical systems to actually explain or to describe the dynamics of these networks by using um, one-dimensional dynamical systems. So one-dimensional because here we just have a single population of neurons that presumably have uh, similar computational properties. And we're going to investigate the diversity of behaviors that such a network of neurons can generate as a function of the connectivity strength and the external input. So one of the, the first things that we can do in this network is determine uh, the fixed points. So mathematics tells us that every dynamical system has uh, fixed points that also have different names. They're also known as equilibria or steady states. And these fixed points correspond to um, uh, values of the firing rate where the dynamics of the rate does not change at all. So we can do this by looking at the equation that describes the activity of this uh, neural population, so DRDT. And by definition, we're looking for values of R where these dynamics do not change in time. So this means that we're going to set the derivative of this population as a function of, uh, with respect to time, equal to zero. And so that means we just rewrite the right-hand side of this expression 
and just write that then the, the fixed point of this one dimensional dynamics R is just equal to F, so the nonlinear function of uh, the total input current, which is now a sum of the external input current received by the population and the product of the recurrent connectivity and the activity of this recurrent population R. So this is what how we can um, mathematically calculate the fixed points of the dynamics. But what does this really mean? And how can we actually um, visualize this? Can we understand this in a more graphical way? And the answer is yes, we can understand this in a very simple way. To do this, we're just going to slightly rewrite the equation for the firing rate dynamics by moving the time constant from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So now we have an expression for what the change in the firing rate R is as a function of or with respect to time. And so this is this expression on the right hand side. So now what we can do is we can actually uh, plot that change in the firing rate as a function of time as a function of uh, the firing rate activity of the population itself. So now we can generate a plot of this dr dt as a function of r. Because this function f is highly nonlinear, we saw in last tutorial this has the shape of a sigmoid. This um, function, the RDT versus R, has this um, complex shape that has these um, um, uh, knees in uh, several places. In addition to just plotting this to understand how the fixed points, um, uh, what the fixed points are in this in this plot, we need to also introduce the concept of a vector field or a phase plane. So indeed, just by plotting the RDT as a function of R we have effectively plotted the phase plane of this one-dimensional dynamical system. So this tells us not how the activity R changes in time, which is what we saw at the end of the last tutorial, but how the change in the activity with respect to time depends on the values the, the, of the firing rate of the population at that given time point. So this, this, is, this now defines the notion of a phase plane for a one-dimensional dynamical system. So now we can... Uh, plot indeed the fixed points in this graphical representation in the phase plane of this one-dimensional dynamical system. As we said, the phase, the fixed points correspond exactly to uh, the values of the population activity R, where the dynamics do not change. And so if you see in this plot, this is exactly the values where drdt is equal to zero. So here, this dashed line denotes the value where drdt is equal to zero. And so we see that the fixed points correspond to these uh, points in gray where exactly um, uh, the curve now intersects um, the dashed line that indicates zero. So in summary, uh, what we will uh, do now in the tutorial um, <clears throat> will be to investigate the fixed points of the dynamics of the equation that we just wrote down for a recurrent network. These fixed points exactly correspond to uh, values of the firing rate activity where nothing changes, where the dynamics does not change. It doesn't increase or doesn't decrease. It just stays at uh, that uh, point. So in the tutorial, we will explore how to calculate and how to visualize these fixed points graphically, just like uh, what we saw uh, earlier and also numerically. And we will determine how these fixed points depend on uh, parameters in the network. For example, the connectivity W, the external uh, input I external, and the time constant. So now it is your turn. <laughs>